the typical process is, you know, we're just like living our lives, really. And ideas just bubble up because we run into an issue or we run into a problem or some desire comes up where we're like, oh, I wish this thing existed or this doorknob should be this way. Or like, you know, there are always things that come up and they're not necessarily things that turn into products. Like some of these ideas are just like things we want to solve in our house. And the way the workshop is set up, it's set up so that uh, we can come up with an idea, quickly sketch it, and then in the same day, usually within a few hours, we can draw it up in CAD on the computer, 3D print it or machine it so that we could have a functional thing in a few hours or at the maximum by the end of the day so that we could test it and prove to ourselves essentially that this thing is worth making or that it needs a new version or whatever it requires. But usually we're, yeah, you know, the layout, our living situation, everything is set up so that we could get there really fast so that we can either eliminate it, be like, oh, that was a dumb idea. We don't need to work on it anymore. Or we could decide, we're like, oh, that's actually, there's something interesting there. Let's keep putting energy into it and working on it. I think with something like Time Since Launch, we were solving for a lot of different, both conceptual things and also technical things. You know, there, and so prototypes often were answering questions about one or the other. And, you know, that project, I think, more than most of our things, they had to, prototypes always had to serve something within those veins. Um, some of the earliest prototypes were very functional. Actually, no, we wanted, some of them were functional, but some of them we really wanted to just get a feel of like what this thing would be like if we had it and what it would feel like to have this thing counting, you know, at a scale of a day, you know, if we kept it for a few weeks. Um, the original design of Time Since Launch, it was intended as, um, it was actually intended as two devices that would, you know, you'd break them apart and then once they would separate, sort of like, um, am I gonna mess up Felix Gonzalez Torres, Perfect Lovers? Um, this idea that you would share a time zone between two, two units. Um, but then after doing that, we, we kind of thought that there was too many ideas jumbled into one. Yeah, with time since launch, and I think with many of our products, we're constantly changing little things. I mean, they're usually so minor that people don't notice it. Like you'd have to look really hard to notice what we're changing. But almost every production run we do, so we usually make them in a few thousand at a time. And each production run, we're tweaking something to make small improvements. I think when we first started, you know, it felt like once you finish a project, you're like, done. We just need to like figure out how to sell it. But it turns out it's not like that. Yeah, every time we're just like, oh, why don't we, we could tweak it. So let's just tweak it and we make it better. We've heard from lots of people who have, have used Time Since Launch. I'd say probably the most common use is during marriages. A lot of people get married and then they celebrate when they launch, when they pull the pin. A lot of babies being born, um, people will do that. Or when they leave their birthing place they'll, and their baby goes outside for the first time. Or launching companies. Yeah, launching companies. Quitting jobs. Buying a new house. Uh, we, we've seen things like that. We like the idea of people coming up with their own traditions and rituals um, surrounding this, this object and really just being creative about saying, you know, like this moment, it just feels kind of special and let's elevate it with a piece like this. I think it's so cool, first of all, <laughs> that it's being acquired. Also that it's like an electronic device that is powered and running. Uh, is also interesting. We talked a lot about how, yeah, you guys have to figure out how to maintain it, which I find fascinating. Every time I think about having this thing being taken care of in a museum setting for, I don't know, hundreds, thousands of years, it just I'm just like, that's, yeah, it just blows my mind. I don't know what else to think about it other than that. 
it's amazing that that's going to happen. This is probably the very, very first one. This is an EA display, and it was running on two point cell batteries. Um, it was just like trying to figure out the form factor, so this has two AA batteries that are on the inside here, touching the aluminum parts. Yeah, and then this is, yeah, kind of, yeah, closer to our latest version, uh, but not the latest, latest. There's also this idea, though, that Time since launch has the potential to exist. Well, it can exist in, I guess, let's say three states. There are a few more states actually, but one of them is the pre launch state. So it's this idea that's very, um, it's kind of like beautiful and optimistic. At like, there will be a moment in the future where you can pull this pin. All right, are we ready? Okay, you're gonna hold it. Yeah. I'm gonna pull it. Ready? Three. three. Two, one. <laughs> the thing that's exciting for me to have Time Since Launch in a museum setting is really to get more people to think about time differently or to just like, yeah, just like think about it a little bit differently. Just the idea that you can, you know, potentially start this new time zone, which is the way we like to think about it, or just like record a moment and have this thing track how long it's been since that moment. It's just uh, an idea. And I think if there's a way to display it, or I don't know, a way to talk about it in the museum so that people get introduced to this idea would be, for me, kind of amazing. Cause then you, you'll start thinking about time differently and then you'll start questioning, like, why do we keep time this way? Like. And there's so, you know, there's so much history that uh, forced time into this weird thing that we use today. And I think, yeah, the more we can open that up and allow people to have some agency in that, I think the happier we'll all be. Mm -hmm.